So this video will cover what equipment you'll need to start knitting socks. Hello and welcome to the Crimson Stitchery video channel about making all things and useful. My name is Anushka and you can find me elsewhere online as Sour Telling and links and show notes for this video can be found in the down bar here below on YouTube. So this video will cover what equipment you'll need to start knitting socks and it's coming out of my sock series, a video series all about socks, um, <laughs> sharing my advice and my experience. I've been knitting socks for a very long time. Um, I think I started when I was a teenager when I was learning to knit just because I was curious at trying it out and my main impetus of sock knitting has come over the last five years or so when I have knit on average a pair of socks a month and more recently since I've started the Crimson Stitchery video channel on YouTube I've started designing and writing patterns for sock knitting patterns and I've got some of my designs around me here today and lots of people have commented on videos saying that they enjoy the designs they like how they look but they've never done sock knitting they're unsure about where to start and I hope that these videos are helpful so what equipment do you need when you want to start knitting socks? Now, it's quite likely that if you've already been knitting or if you've got a sewing kit kicking around or a mending kit, that you might have some of these things already at home. So certain basic things that you'll need just for knitting are a tapestry needle and a pair of snips. Like many makers, I find it helpful to have lots of pairs of little scissors tucked around and also multiple uh, tapestry needles in different sizes because these little things tend to get lost quite easily. So tapestry needle and snips. The next thing that you need are stitch markers. Now, stitch markers, um, there are so many of them on the market. Honestly, there are so many. And um, for the longest time, I didn't buy any stitch markers, I just used a safety pin. But the only thing you need to be worried about is that sometimes the coil at the end of the safety pin can get stuck in your knitting. It can, your yarn can just get wedged in that little coil. So if you've got normal safety pins at home that you want to use, just go ahead and use those. And if you don't, but you want to order some equipment that is considered a bit more multi-craft dual, <laughs> things that can have more purposes, then try to order some coilless safety pins. Now, there are all sorts of dangly and sparkly stitch markers available on the market, um, some which are really, really beautiful and are made by um, artisans and craftspeople, like jewellers and so on, and they're really gorgeous, but personally, I stay clear from all of those because the fancier and dangly that danglier they are, the more likely it seems to be that they get caught on my knitting. And I have been given beautiful stitch markers um, by, by people, you know, as presents, which has been really lovely, but I just honestly, I've tried using them and they don't do it for me. So in my opinion, the simpler the better. Now in terms of stitch markers, you could go really old school and just literally get a piece of yarn or a piece of string and tie a knot um, and have that. But I've done that before and I do find that it's just a bit floppy and it doesn't, it kind of gets in the way and it just doesn't function as well. I really like having round stitch markers, um, little rings, and again, you can buy them from knitting supply shops, but actually I use leftovers from bra making. Um, I've got a bunch of bra making findings. You know, you tend to buy these things in a big packet and um, they're pretty useful. But also when I've had old bras and bikinis and so on that are knackered, I will just take the little ring from that and recycle it and start using it as knitting. Um, out of all of that, the stitch markers that I really like are actually these lamp bulb shaped stitch markers. And I've got a big packet of them, which I just ordered online and I really enjoy that. The reason that I prefer a safety pin based um, stitch marker for knitting socks, so either an actual safety pin, a coilless safety pin, or one of these lamp bulb shaped ones, is because you can just actually insert it into the knitted fabric itself and it can be static as well as keeping it on the needles and moving it around. And it's really helpful to have a a bunch of different stitch markers, preferably in different styles or colours, just to help you mark different points of the sock. So it's good to have one for the beginning of the round, when you're about to mark the heel. Um, sometimes you need to put stitch markers if you've got some patterns just to help you count the numbers, like in a lace repeat or, or a cable chart, it's quite handy to have around. So stitch markers, um, ideally something that has, gives you the flexibility to go in the fabric and sit on the needles to help distinguish different parts of the pattern. 
So lastly, we get to the needles themselves. Now, when you're knitting socks, you're going to be knitting them in the round so that you're creating a lovely, flexible tube that's really comfortable to wear on the body and that will mold to the very complex shape of the human foot. So you're gonna be producing fabric in the round, essentially. And there are different techniques for knitting in the round. You can knit using double pointed needles. You can knit using a magic loop using one circular needle, or you can do a form of magic loop using two needles. So if you're already comfortable with knitting in the round, then this is gonna be a piece of cake to you. But if you've not done any knitting in the round, you've only done flat knitting before, um, possibly smaller projects, this is gonna be the thing that, you know, is really gonna be testing the water. and. Anything to do with sock knitting or knitting in general just seems to have created this enormous like sub market within the market of knitting and there's so much choice out there it's quite overwhelming. There are like different shaped needles, there are bendy needles, there are tiny 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 circular needles which like are the size of pins um, which some people like. But honestly with a beginner knitter I would advise to just keep it simple, go back to basics. Personally I would advise just using double pointed needles and knitting in the round like that. Um, ideally a set of five double pointed needles so that you can divide your knitting into quarters and knit around it using the fifth. Um, or if you're feeling confident and comfortable, you could have a set of four. Um, but obviously, honestly, just buy the set of five because then you've got the option to use four or five, don't, don't buy the set of four. Um, and you know, you could try magic loop, but if you've never knit in the round ever before, I do find that it can be a little bit confusing. So obviously I'm not demonstrating knitting in the round in this video, um, and I do advise looking up that technique in general, but just wanted to discuss those. Now, I think that for beginner sock knitters, almost more important than the needles themselves is the material. And when you're knitting socks, you're knitting with really small needles with very thin yarn at quite a tight tension. And there's a lot going on. There's different directions, you know, tiny stitches, dealing with um, putting them all into the round, not getting twisted, and having all of the different increasing and decreasing so on going on. So I think that it's important to have knitting needles that are made from material that is a little bit toothy, a little bit textured, specifically wooden or bamboo needles. So I knit a number of pairs of socks at the beginning from a set of bamboo needles and I've got to say first of all be prepared that they're not going to last forever because like I said when you're knitting socks there's a lot of tension going on, you're knitting yarn at a very tight tension or gauge so that it's really durable and also because of all of that finagling. But needles made of wood or bamboo are much more textured than metal needles um, and they're not as slippery as metal needles or plastic needles which means that because because the stitches are gonna just cling to the needles that little bit more, it just helps you to have a little bit more control when you're knitting. And I think that once you get comfortable with sock knitting and you really get to grips with it, then afterwards do upgrade, get a needle with a very slick and slippery material, something that really allows those stitches to fly. Um, and I talked about this quite a lot in my video, How to Knit Faster, link on screen here now. But when you're, when you're beginning, you do want the opposite of that. You want to slow down so that you can stay control until you develop, you know, the exact muscle memory that you need to manipulate all of the stitches in the right way. So wooden or bamboo needles. Now, obviously that can slow down the knitting a little bit because of the grippy surface texture. So try to look for needles which have a point, um, which aren't too blunt or stubby at the end. Um, and that will really, really help things along. But like I said, um, nothing is infallible, no tools last forever, and I myself have cracked bamboo needles, um, you know, not on my first sock, but after knitting a number of socks on bamboo needles, I have literally worn them out, especially because obviously you're knitting on very small, tiny needles, could be two and a half millimetre, two and a quarter millimetre um, needles, which I think is like US one or thereabouts. Um, so it's a lot of pressure to put on something that is very tiny and obviously wooden bamboo has a little bit of flexibility but yeah it's not going to last forever. Wooden and bamboo needles are really the way to go. They're generally quite light unlike a lot of metal needles plus they are warm to the touch so they're just much kinder on your hands and on your wrists than metal needles can be so do try those out. 
So that's really it. It's just a set of needles um, for working in the round, either a set of double points or a longer circular needle for magic loop, if, if that's the route that you'd like to go down, a yarn needle, bunch of stitch markers and a pair of snips and you're ready to go that's it. Of course you also need your yarn and your pattern and I will be chatting about yarn choices for sock knitting in future videos in this series so do hit subscribe to the Crimson Stitchery to keep updated of um, other videos that are coming out in this series. I'd love to know from beginner sock knitters if there's anything else that is putting you off just starting to knit socks, if there's anything pressing that you're unsure of that you'd like me to cover in this series, and to experienced sock knitters, do you have any advice for newbie sock knitters? Are there particular types of needles that you recommend, particular, particular techniques or ways of holding the yarn? Um, do share the love down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video, do give me a thumbs up and also check out my fortnightly craft podcast on this channel, The Crimson Stitchery, where I talk about everything that I have been knitting, sewing, mending and making in general, making all things that are beautiful and useful. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.